Y'all, I got money on my mind today. Let's discuss. What's up, y'all? It's your boy Beasley here. Hope you all are staying cool, calm, and collected out there. Today, I want to talk to you guys about something that's a little serious. Now, on my channel, I don't only just talk about celebrity news and gossip. I like to keep the content a little versatile over here, no position. But today, I want to talk to you guys about finances, these CEOs, these music ex producers and um, artists selling off their masters. And also, overall, I want to talk about what exactly is going on with the economy that we, the little people, don't know about. So starting off, I want to talk about Jeff Bezos. If you don't know him, he is the CEO and the creator of Amazon. Now, he really picked my mind because, for one, I've always kind of... I wouldn't say looked up to him, but I've always intrigued about his story about how he went ahead and turned an online bookstore into and turned into a basically a retail powerhouse known as Amazon today. But he was in the news this past week because he went ahead and stepped down. Now, to me, it really got my little tinfoil hat tingling because if you don't remember, during like the beginning of the pandemic, really before the pandemic was announced last year, there was like a mass exodus of CEOs kind of stepping down from their um, positions in their company. And also, if you factor in Oprah Winfrey, who has owned own for over, I want to say, damn near almost 30 years at this point, she stepped down as a CEO from own as well. So I'm just sitting here now. Now, correct me if I'm wrong. She either stepped down as a CEO or she kind of sold off some shares. I'm not really 100%, but what I do know is she kind of stepped down from the throne a little bit. But that really just had me thinking, like, what is really going on? Like, there must be something deeper below the surface that a lot of me and you, the normal people, the little people, don't really know about. So when he stepped down, it came out that there was also a scandal in the fact that he was basically stealing from the church's money. Like, he was basically taken from his own people. Now, in my opinion, you can't become a billionaire or a trillionaire without some level of exploitation of the public or the people that work underneath you. But I will say he went ahead and stepped down because, one, he already got his money out of um, Amazon. And for two, he didn't want to deal with that scandal. He probably already had to deal with um, over-promising and severely under-delivering to his employees during this whole entire pandemic. But he went ahead and gave his position up to a colleague because they were stealing the tip money from their Amazon Flex workers. Amazon Flex workers are people that are basically the Amazon delivery team, but they have to incur the cost of driving their own car to make deliveries and incurring the cost of, you know, the whole entire maintenance of their vehicle, gas, all that, all for like a little $15 an hour check. But, you know, times are hard and we got to go out and get it any way that we can. But the fact that he was stealing from his own employees like that is just absolutely profound. And it feels like he's about to get away with this scot-free. So it has me thinking, like, what other scandals were going on in these other companies where the CEO stepped down that haven't made it to the public yet? That really has me thinking. And also, there must be something going on with the economy in the very near future that we do not know. Like, if you guys don't know... The old way of doing things is dying. The old banking system is dying. And everybody, not just the little people, these CEOs and these um, celebrities are financially hurting. Like they may not be hurting like me and you, but they're all hurting. And that leads me to these music artists selling off their masters. Now this was first brought to my attention when uh, Lil Wayne sold his masters for $100 million. Now $100 million to me and you, that is life changing money. That is money that is just... Like, oh my God, how can I obtain this wealth? But for Lil Wayne to sell off his masters, it felt a little crackheadish to me. Like, it felt like, what is going on with this dude? And then on top of that, he's facing multiple lawsuits and also had to probably pay off Donald Trump to get pardoned because he was about to go to jail over, I forgot what he was about to go to jail for, but he was about to go to jail over money to, I believe, his assistant and also his manager. Like, there was like a mismanagement of funds and he hasn't really been paying people like that. So Lil Wayne is out here hurting, but all these other celebrities are too. Now, it was news to me, like this one uh, billionaire by the name of Mark, M Mark, M Mark I I his last name is hard to say, Mark Mercury, Mark Mercury, that's what I'm going to call him. He is a billionaire that is buying everybody else's masters. And it really shocked me when Timbaland, of all people, sold his masters. And then you have Shakira, and then you have Scooter Braun, who sold off Taylor Swift's masters, and they all got $100 million on and up. You know, that may be good money right now, but think about the long term. Like in a few years from now, they're going to be having their, all their music played in the local Target or um, Walmart or CVS. And you also have like a lot of rap music played throughout the Galleria, which to me is a little, 
not to sound elitist, but it's a little ghetto gallery, get it together. But it really just baffles me that these music artists are just selling off all of their hard work throughout the years just for like a quick check. Granted, the quick check is a good chunk of change and everybody is out here hurting, including them, but a lot of them are not thinking in the long term of how like how much their music is going to be sampled in the future or how much money this billionaire is going to be making off of all of these masters combined. Like he's going to be a trillionaire. I mean, if he has the money to do it, then kudos to him. Like he's doing it the right way, but I'm just, I'm really just baffled by like, is everybody really just broke, to be honest? Like, is everybody really just out here just stutting, flaunting, like they got it, but when they really don't, they don't even have like a savings account to their name? Like, what is really going on with these celebrities today? Moving on to the little people, I wanna give you guys just a little bit of game just so you guys can be on the up and up and really ride this pandemic out the right way. Now, before I even say this, I am not a financial advisor, but I'm just gonna give you guys some um, brief advice. My best friend Brent has given me very, very sound financial advice. I wanna give you some key tips that have worked for me in the past, and that way, whenever you move out, you won't have to be hanging in a child line for food. And I, and I just wanna make sure you guys come out of this pandemic on top. For one, get you a high interest savings account. I, for an example, Marcus is a good online savings account. You can withdraw from them anytime you need to. It takes about three business days for it to hit your checkers account to get you a high interest savings account. I think their interest rate went down about to like, I wanna say like 0.5%, but I think the percentage rate went down mainly due to the pandemic, but also it is a good place to store your money if you don't have a savings account already. Also, if you have T-Mobile, get you a T-Mobile high interest checkers account. The interest rate that they pay on your money that you put into that account is 4%. And that 4% goes all the way up until you get like $3,000. And then after that, it's, it goes down to 1%. But you're still getting interest off of the money you put in. And then you just have to put back like $200 a month and you're good to go. Also, start investing the stocks. Do some research. Don't look at stocks like, hey, I can't afford it. You can invest into a partial stock. Like, I, that used to be me. Like, I'm like, oh, I can't afford this right now because I wanted the whole thing, not just a piece of the pie. But you should go ahead and invest into a partial of a stock until that partial becomes a full stock. And also, you just buying in, and whenever that company goes up, your money will double. So you will be good to go. But make sure that you enter at the right price point, especially when it's like really, really low. Buy low and sell high. And if you're investing into cryptos, cryptos are going to be big one day. Do your research on which ones you need. Definitely invest in cryptos for the most part. Buy and hold. Look into, there's more cryptos than just Bitcoin and Ethereum. Like there's other cryptos out there that are going to pop one day. So just do your research and invest little by little. And for my opinion, when you buy cryptos, most of them you need to hold because some of them are going to be really, really huge one day. So those are my little tips on financial advice. It's very surface level, very brief, but again, I'm not a financial advisor. I'm just giving you guys tips that have worked for me in the past. So invest wisely, do your research. In 2021, don't be a dumb hoe. That's a no-no. But those are my views. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe, and I will come at you guys with some more content.